Hello and welcome to another edition of Guinea Pigs the Greg. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed the content uh, of the YouTube channel so far and find something useful and interesting. Again, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank everyone for uh, all the support, uh, the likes, the shares, the comments, uh, the personal messages. Uh, I really do appreciate it and um, it does encourage me to make more videos. So um, keep, keep it up and I'll keep creating the videos. So being successful on the show bench is the main reason we're breeding the guinea pigs. So there are a lot of aspects to this um, and a lot of different things that you need to put together to collect together in order to make uh, the animal successful on the show bench. So you start off from good husbandry. Um, we then have to look at uh, you know good health, um, the, the way we feed, the way we clean. Um, uh, we do all of this. We also uh, have to breed uh, a good guinea pig so we have to understand uh, our breed the breed standards then you have to actually uh, be able to pair the guinea pigs up to produce the good offspring so there's a lot of different facets to, to this and um, one of the most important ones that we're going to concentrate on in this video is how to actually train your guinea pig to stand on the judging table and how to prepare it for its journey to the show um, we'll look at all the other aspects in later videos but I thought this would be a good one because uh, this starts right from birth uh, and works its way all the way up to uh, an adult. I mean, show training never stops. And there are no shortcuts to um, successfully training your guinea pig. Uh, you have to work at this daily. You have to select the right ones. You have to select the pig that's got the, the correct acumen for standing and for, for being trained. Uh, some guinea pigs are, uh, just do not enjoy this. So we don't put these through the pressures of um, training a, a guinea pig for show. They we're looking for a combination of um, the correct, the, the closest pig we've got to the breed standard, whilst also being the right temperament to show. Time and repetition, and just handling your guinea pigs constantly, daily, just all the time, just keep going over and over and over these same steps, all the way through, increasing the intensity, increasing the exposure, and constantly reassuring that guinea pig is going to help you in the long run. So we start our show training at around three weeks old, um, once we've selected pigs that look vaguely like they're going to have some potential um, on the show bench. And I brilliantly do this by holding the pig in the hand. Um, just getting used to being handled in the correct way, um, give them a little bit of time on the table, and just correcting their stance. And you correct this stance uh, by lifting them up onto their uh, front legs. You just keep bringing them back to the middle of the table, giving them some reassurance in the hand so that they feel safe. Um, this is just limited exposure, just literally a few minutes a day. Lots of reassuring tickles and hugs, um, but we put the front feet on our hand, the back feet on the table, so they start to get a feel for the table as well. And then as you see, he slowly started to calm down, um, still looking around, still a bit nervous, but lots of reassuring uh, hugs and things. They get plenty of treats as well once they complete these tasks. And again, we just keep holding him in the hand until he feels safe and secure, putting lots of pressure down on him from above, so he feels, it's almost like a hug almost, um, just pushing down from the shoulder to the rump and uh, pulling those ears down into position all the time. And I keep correcting him, pushing him forward so that he gets used to being handled the way that uh, a judge would handle him. And as you can see now, literally after just a few minutes, um, this is the first time I've handled him and he's already able to stand on his own, um, facing forward without running off the table uh, every five seconds. Not to say that he won't run, but he's nice and firm at the moment. As I say, we do this uh, once, maybe twice a day, um, just to make the pig feel comfortable uh, and uh, we can assess whether he's actually got the acumen to be a show pig. Um, if this KB was running off constantly and was scared up here, we just wouldn't use him on the show bench at all. So between um, five and eight weeks, we use different techniques. Uh, this one is a double hand technique where we go over the top, constantly smoothing the guinea pig, giving it plenty of reassurance that uh, it's in a safe place. Uh, and at that point, once the guinea pig is relaxed and safe, we can start to adjust his position to stand on its front legs and uh, show off his true potential. If we can get him to stand for literally uh, 30 seconds at a time here, I'm more than happy at this stage. Um, this pig is showing that it's got some potential to stand, which is great. Um, so this double hand technique over the top really strokes the pig into position and keeps them uh, secure. I'll still pick them up in the hand, um, supporting them either side of the leg, 
and, and their front feet on the top of my palm. Uh, so they feel really safe. They've got a nice grip on me. They're not going to run anywhere. They're not going to fall off. Then we can reintroduce them to the table. Again, just introducing them to that new lifting so they stand correctly. And then every time they uh, move from this position, we just gently put them back into it. You can see he's got a tendency to turn. So we just correct that position. Lots of stroking, keeping it nice and firm. And then again, lift up onto the legs. Lots of reassuring tickles and hugs along the way. And then all of a sudden, it feels a lot more comfortable. Uh, the constant repetition is very key. Um, it makes the animal feel comfortable in the positions we're putting them in. And uh, it's a lot easier to, than trying to do this at a later date. At this point now, you've really selected which pigs um, need show training. And you can start really upping the intensity of this. Uh, getting the pig to stand in the desired position. Now, different caviers have to stand in different ways to show off different attributes. Himalayans, um, I get to stand high to show off their front feet and their smut, which gives uh, a full view of the contrast. Um, whereas the goldens, I do tend to let lay lower on the leg to reveal their true profile. Um, so you can now move this KV into most positions um, and you can see you know, he feels comfortable high on his legs. It's now that the, the animals stand uh, as required. I start to move it around the table, correcting its position in, in so it looks at different angles, um, which is something that a judge may do. It may, the judge may want to see it in different positions. So we train the animal to do this. Again, you'll need some correction, and it's only time that can do this. And it's not going to be done overnight. This is weeks and weeks and weeks of training, months of training. Um, it does, you do decrease as it gets to an adult because once it's completed its training, it tends to keep it. So getting the animal used to noises, um, so the environment that they're showing in, is uh, very important. Um, we don't obviously put the radio right behind them. The radio is not on at the moment. Uh, the radio is normally up on the shelf in the room and we have a timer to come on two or three times a day, um, listen to various uh, radio channels, anything from heavy metal all the way down to classical. And we find that this uh, background noise really helps to calm the animal down. So the other type of noise training we do is we use a series of clicks and clapping um, to make sure that when you click, they don't move, or when you clap, they don't move. So any sudden noises, we want that animal to be calm and relaxed in the, in the position it's in. Because um, on a show, there are chairs banging, there are boxes dropping, there are loud noises and people and children screaming. So we want to make our animal as comfortable in these environments as possible. So limited low noise exposure. And as you've seen, I am constantly giving reassuring um, pats and tickles and things just to make the guinea pig feel reassured and safe. It's important that your animal feels safe with you and in the environment it's in and what it's doing for you. But the added benefit of training your guinea pigs is you can health check them easier. I can check the ears, the teeth, the feet, um, all very comfortably because they feel safe with me. Um, and this is fantastic when grooming or preparing. Uh, it's just an added benefit, really. Um, but yeah, being able to check the ears, the eyes, the feet, the coat, uh, with very little effort, um, jobs that on some animals would take two people can now be done on your own. So once the animal's reached about six months, uh, the intensity of the training uh, really relaxes. Um, I tend to use then a carpeted square so that they feel safe on their own and they're really not going to move anywhere, they can't slide anywhere. Doing your training on a firm surface is brilliant. You really want to avoid um, like slidey tables or, or cloth that, that's very shiny and they can slip and slide around on. They need something they can actually grip into. So now the animal's much larger, you need to be able to lift it into position safely. So I bring it up onto his front feet. As you can see, I'm using the muscle of the shoulder. I'm not strangling the guinea pig when I'm lifting it because the body weight's quite heavy now. As you can see, I'm bringing it up onto his front feet and then pushing it down into the right position. So as you can see there, it just lifts up and then pull down. I'll clear you again from the side, up onto the front feet. Now you can feel safe that your animal can stand on their own and not run off the box. Um, I still employ the double hand over technique when trying to get the best position out of the guinea pig as I find this reassuring um, uh, effort uh, just reminds it of a, a younger time um, and makes the animal feel completely safe um, because it's familiar. It's the technique we've employed all the way through and it's just that repetition over and over again. Um, I'm afraid there are no shortcuts to this um, but some guinea pigs do have a 
a predisposition to standing well, and others do tend to be a bit more skittish. If you'd like to pause the video here, we can play a game of uh, musical statues. Uh, which one do you think will move first? And if you guessed the Himalayan, you were right. So using these stalls is uh, a very good way of getting used to the judging stalls in a show. And it's something that uh, we, we practice quite a lot on the younger pigs. As they get older, they don't need so much of this training. Um, but we find it very important to get them used to the environment they're going to be in. Uh, so this is uh, just one of the things that we do uh, to keep them going. And we can leave them in here whilst we're in the shed. Um, they don't tend to run off of the uh, the thing. We use carpet squares on here to give them something to grip onto, so they feel quite safe and secure. Um, so yeah, just give this a try if you've got the uh, opportunity. You don't have to have a, a four stack, you can just have literally one or two, um, or just even make one just to, to, to help your pigs uh, practice with. But uh, yeah, see how you get on with that. The other thing we do to get the pigs used to being handled at the shows is to hold them like a judge would or like a, a steward would at the shoes. So we do this by quite simply uh, supporting the pig by holding it either side uh, of its legs. So he hasn't got anywhere to ping off of, so he's not gonna pounce or jump. Um, so it's quite important that he feels safe and secure. He's using his front two paws to grip onto me, as you can see here. Uh, and and I've, as you can see just here, uh, so that way he feels nice and safe, he's not going to run anywhere, like I say he can't jump anywhere, I've got him completely secure, then we use the other hand on top just to keep him completely safe, we hold the pig as close to our body as we can, uh, that way we're not hurting ourselves or the animal when we're carrying it at all. Um, we only carry one guinea pig at a time, uh, carrying any more could be quite dangerous, if you had two, one in each hand, uh, you know, if something went wrong the animal's going to get hurt and the owner's not going to be particularly happy. Uh, especially if it's one of uh, your, your own pigs as well, you don't want to definitely don't want to do that. Um, so we, we we get used to setting them up in the hand as well, because uh, sometimes just judging the hand, um, we train the pigs predominantly to be judged on a box because that's the uh, the, the majority of the time is spent on the box. But um, some judges obviously when they first pick up the pig, they will hold it, assess it in the hand, and so we want this guinea pig to get used to. To, to, to this uh, stance and uh, the way of looking at it. So there we go. Hopefully that's uh, helped out. And I do a very firm push down at the shoulder all the way to the rump and then round off at the edge and that way the pig feels secure. Uh, so if the pig's happy and secure, he's not gonna want to jump or run around. So we put the pigs in the traveling box, uh, just getting used to being carried in the shows, being used to being in that compartment look fairly small but they're there they can take a good sized adult um, and the reason they're that size is to stop the animal from running around when in transit that could be quite dangerous if an animal was in a big box or a big cage and started running around whilst it was being traveled in the car or carried into the show uh, it could hurt itself and we don't want that we want the animal to remain calm um, similar to how uh, hawkers put the hoods over the, um, the the hawks to keep them calm we do the same thing here we keep the animals facing in one direction plenty of hay plenty of food in, in the box if they want to eat but then the lids put down and predominantly they, they, they just rest um, and that's what we want we want a nice relaxed animal so when it comes to the show it's ready to do its best for us and that is uh, all we can make for so hopefully you found that video informative uh, I took a lot of time and a lot of uh, thought went into uh, putting that together for you um, there will be lots of other videos on the other important aspects of preparing guinea pig for showing such as grooming and, and feeding and breeding um, but this one concentrated on the more important aspects of once you've actually got a guinea pig worthy of showing, what you start to do to prepare it before you even start thinking of grooming and cutting nails and things. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Uh, give a like and a share and a comment and, and all, all those sorts of things. Um, and until next time, I'm Guinea Pig Greg. Bye bye.